Doing this with some yogis. I'm not saying everyone is like this. And, it's an um, observation. Yeah, it's just yeah. An observation. You know, that I see that in some spaces. Even some yogis aren't even afraid to speak out about things that are going on in the world. Wars, famines, you know, different things. And because they just want to not disrupt or upset a certain type of community that comes to their class or someone that may feel some type of way. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, not saying that those spaces are for like, you know, to have those conversations, but whether that's even your social media or something like that, maybe you're afraid to speak out about it. I think you should, if you want to, if that's something close to your heart, mm -hmm. um, you should have the liberty to do that and show up as yourself you know be genuine you know and not to be put into a box not be put into a box of oh well i'm a yogi i i need to be about the peace or even whenever people because people will try to weaponize that against yogis as well you mean them standing for something no them um them being a yogi and you shouldn't be upset you should be, you know, peaceful. Why are you getting into, you know... Standing for something doesn't make you less peaceful. Exactly. That just means that you actually feel for what's happening in the world around you. Exactly. Yeah. Mental Health Monday. Mental Health Monday. Mental Health Monday. Mental Health Monday. I heard the bass and I was like, yeah, nah, that's him. That was that Renaissance that's, that's album him. coming bassing that's, like that. That's him. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 808s, <laughs> right, I literally. like tremble. I was like, oh man, I see you. Yes. Welcome back to another episode of Mental Health Monday here with my boy Trent. This is Juice Jones. What's good? What's up? What's up? All right, tell the people who you are and what it is that you do. Yes, I. my name is Trenton Hardison. I am a black yoga instructor mm -hmm. in the DMV in DC specifically, mm -hmm. um, offering trap yoga and R&B yoga at the Mara Hotel every single Sunday. Mm -hmm. At 10 and 11.30 a.m. Plug, plug. What does it mean to create a safe space? <sighs> Creating a safe space for me means just allowing people to be themselves authentically. Mm -hmm. Being able to show up as who they are and not feel like that side eye, someone's going to be judging them or someone's going to be looking at them crazy if that is their first time mm -hmm. or if they get emotional or feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah, being that home. So it's feeling like home is a safe space. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I want everyone that comes in to feel like this is... Like I'm on their couch or I'm in their living room and this this is good. This mm -hmm. is cozy. No Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you create these safe spaces, what are your concerns? Like if there was a to do list for what a what would make a great safe space, what would be your top three? Mm. What would make a great safe space? Um, maybe a safe space is finding something, someone, a community that you can see yourself in. Mm -hmm. That would be number one. Um, maybe even room wise, just temperature. Okay. Um, not cold like yeah. I got it in here. <laughs> yeah. No, this is good, you know, but like, it, whether, yeah, you got hugs on, that's why it's good. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, the toes cozy. Yes, yes the toes yeah. are cozy, yes. Um, but like, is it too hot? Is it too cold? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is well, just that. That can cause a lot of, you know, just the vibe of the space. Is it like, mm, you know, and then being yourself, just being yourself, finding something that's unique about what you offer mm -hmm. you know and being able to see that community be able to come in and be like okay like this is cool this is different mm -hmm. you know and it may be like awkward for them the first time or even you um as you're offering that new thing but you know i think those three things could offer 
the recipe for a great safe space? I got started um, really just by happenstance almost, it felt like, because mm -hmm. um, I was never going out intending to be like this guy, this person that wants to help heal the world and mm -hmm. like do all these things. I was, you know, transferring in the Howard okay. in 2013. How was Howard for you? I loved Howard. It was a struggle. There's always a um, Howard struggle, the runaround, as There's we call it. There's always something going on at Howard. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, it does not come with this, without its things, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I started at Howard in 2013, um, transferred in, and I met my best friend, and she was attending this class on the yard, this yoga class, mm -hmm. and... I was like, what is this yoga? Like, what are you what are you doing? Like, oh well it's trap yoga. You know, you should come check it out with me. So I'm like, okay, like let me see what's going on. What year and was this? Twenty thirteen. Okay. Yeah, so fall twenty thirteen. Um and I went to this class, met this gentleman named Brandon Copeland. Mm -hmm. And um I was really just like you know, like enthralled by the whole practice, the concept of trap yoga. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, I'm like, I can, I can get with this, you know? So I started, that's how my practice started. My journey, um, even for self healing started. And then um, even beyond that with the struggles of, you know, going to school, all the trials and tribulations with that comes with that you know just trying to make it through and then just life happens you know i was just dealing with drama um the flavor of life yes exactly <laughs> just so much going on all at once everything everywhere all at once that's yeah. what it was giving so um i was just like i need something mm -hmm. so i don't just do the un thinkable you know like i need to like get myself together like realign and everything like that and so i my practice became consistent so when you say practice you're referring to yoga to yoga yes okay. yes yoga, my yoga practice would you say is yoga a concept that's more like life imitates art or does art imitate life mm, good question i think for me mm -hmm. it was arts imitating life okay and even now whenever i make content on social media um even in my practice while i'm teaching now is you know i may be going through something i may be feeling the type of way i may be listening to a sermon or whatever gospel song that may have came on sunday morning and i'm like you know what this is what i'm shaping my practice around today so the art the practice comes from what is going on personally mm -hmm. and i just deliver that to my students and even if it lands touches one student that is that makes all the difference for me have you ever wanted to be a teacher or do you think you fell into being a teacher when it comes to the wellness aspect of yoga and leading classes it was definitely something that I just stumbled into. Okay. I always thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to be a student for life. You know, student to the game. You know, I love this. You know, mm -hmm. I got my guru. This is my thing. You know, I'm in my jam, you know. Um, and then 2020 happened. Ah. COVID happened. All of those things. And mm -hmm. again, finding myself in that low space. Okay. Um, to where it's just like, you know, I'm in my place by myself, you know, isolated, literally, literally. you know. Yeah. Yes. Did it's, you have anybody in the house that you lived in or was it just you? It was you? just me. It Woo! Just me. That's spicy. That's a lot of alone time. It was, yeah. it was intense. Yeah. It, it's intense. I mean, it's still even now, like, I still live by myself and mm -hmm. I have those thoughts of like, I mean, I could have someone over here. I could get someone, you know, to fill up this space and it's just like, but now I've created that sanctuary yeah. to where it's just like, it, this is too sacred for me to just allow anyone in it to just disrupt my peace. Yeah. Um, so that's how my teaching journey begun because um, 
in July 2020, um, there was a Black Yogi Alliance that was started. Um, Brandon Ahmed and another um, young lady, Davina, she, um, we started, yeah, this coalition and it was about two, three thousand Black Yogis from all around the world. And, um, we all got our yoga teacher training. Okay. And it was the best thing that I could have done. Okay. And even still then, I felt like I was, I didn't want to be a teacher. I was like, I'm going to do this, fill up some <laughs> free time, you know, like just do the things, you yeah. know. Um, and life is just, has a funny way of showing you like, this is what you should be doing. This is what you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. And these questions came directly from what you mentioned. The first question is, tell me about the value of solitude. Mm. It is something that cannot just be, you know, just Im imitated, taken for granted. It's just so, the peace that you find mm -hmm. sitting with yourself, yeah. the places and the nooks and crannies of your mind and of your soul, that heart space that you explore and ask those questions, maybe the hard questions, maybe the, well, why was I doing this? Why was I drinking so much? Why was I hanging around these people? Why was I working this job? You know, anything, it's just like, hmm. You ask yourself those questions and you get answers that you don't always expect to come up. You know, so the, sp the time that you sit in silence and solitude, mm -hmm is unmatched it really is for me and now that's why i'm in such a space to where it's just like i just can't just allow anything or anybody to just come in disrupt it for any reason just because i am lonely or i've been in this solitude this silence for x amount of days mm -hmm. it's not worth it is there such thing as too much solitude Maybe. I think so. Like, how would you define that? Because, like, the reason I ask is most people would view folks who have their own place as privilege. Mm. But for you and your boots, shoes, you got shoes, not boots, you got boots, 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 yeah. boots, you got boots <laughs> on today, you have to work hard to probably get yeah. that place and afford that privacy. Yeah. So for someone in your shoes... How would you define, all right, this is a little bit too much, and what would you do to switch that up as someone who has fallen in love with their solitude? As someone that has fallen in love with their solitude, it's a matter of getting out. Yeah. Um, putting yourself out there. Um, coming out of your comfort zone. This is not necessarily in my comfort zone, but mm -hmm. I enjoy... Very sporadic moment. Yes. Like, hey, now you, yeah. you need to come yeah, on. Yes, yeah. yes. And I, and I enjoy... Those spaces, whenever I challenge myself and someone else's, someone else invites me to challenge myself and mm -hmm. explore different places as well. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes, like, okay, I'm nervous. I have this fear of doing something. Um, oftentimes, those are the exact things that you should be going towards. And so that's why I came for this opportunity. But, you know, in those spaces of extreme solitude or, you know, extreme comfortability in those spaces of solitude, mm -hmm. we have to put ourselves out there. Um, I was a bartender for many, many years before COVID and briefly after COVID for a while. Many moons ago. Many moons ago. <laughs> um, and so um, that helped me a lot, mm -hmm. getting that people interaction even if it was just friday and saturday night yeah um to where it was like okay now <laughs> i don't need to see anyone until next week yeah um but yeah i mean granted we are lucky to live in the nation's capital beautiful yeah. dc and there's so many different things going on mm -hmm. all the time even um, with the crime going up we're still, it, yes. still, DC. still, it's DC. still dc yes there's still um, a name that comes with that yes yeah. um and so it's, it's so much to do and there's so many free things to do and so whether that's going to a museum mm -hmm. going to you know a free roller skating thing there's down people there who go to protest for fun 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I encourage that as well. You know, like we we have to stand up for what is right. And mm -hmm. you know, there's black and brown people. Everyone should be doing it. But we have a you know special relationship with you know protests and fighting for what's right. And so that is also one of the things that I loved about DC. Whenever I first came mm -hmm. in 2013, where'd you come from originally? Pittsburgh. Well, so I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I was living in St. Louis right before I moved to D.C. I'm from Jersey. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Essex County. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big city. A... Big city. Maplewood. Yeah. East yeah. Orange, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So how long have you been? I've been here since 2007. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I went to Catholic University of America mm -hmm. right over there. Right. And then... um I was there until about 2012, 2011, mm -hmm. but I felt like I didn't really get to know the city until 2009, 2010, where I started making friends with folks who are actually from D.C. They told me about the culture. They told me about the importance of the food, yeah, why yeah. beating your feet and go-go actually <laughs> right, mattered. Absolutely. Um, high school beefs are really important, especially when it comes to the college <laughs> level, because mm. you find there's a lot of athletes that take all that with them yeah. and like there's a lot of adults that still care about what's going on on the high school level and they're yes. really about that life when it comes to sports yeah and then church and god yeah you know, what that really means to the community on this side yes it does it means yeah. a lot um so and <laughs> even if you're not in church there is a community that's just about god itself mm -hmm. right and right. what that belief means right and that and thankfully like like a yes i found coming to dc i fell into both of those things very quickly the advocacy mm -hmm. and protests um yeah. being that it was um the 50th anniversary of the million man march that year that i came mm -hmm. um this year was the 60th um and then i found a great church home going to first baptist church of glen arden okay. whenever i first came to dc you, you know how they say that too glen arden yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right, yes. And so, um, you know, I, I did um, thankfully build a great foundation um, being in D.C. and coming to Howard. And I know everyone does not have that story. Yeah. Everyone um, has very different stories and some people, you know, hate D.C., hate Howard, all those things. Yeah. And that is their own thing. But um, yeah. thankfully, um, I did find a community and I continue to find um, my community, my spaces, um, even up to, you know, this year, you know, and mm -hmm. this is it's something that I don't take for granted. OK. Do you find that there's a responsibility within the wellness black alliance that you're a part of mm -hmm. to open doors for others a responsibility yeah um, so like when you became a part of that black alliance and you guys got certified you were like i'm gonna take care of the next one you were like i finally made it how much money <laughs> you make? i got paying my bills now okay we did this thing it was cool but i got paying my bills now right? you are very important but you are not you know gonna what it make is. a thousand millions and trillions of dollars <laughs> doing yoga so no that was definitely not my thought process doing mm -hmm. that it was just like yeah okay maybe i could help my friends okay. like my immediate circle okay maybe i could help introduce this to my family Family, maybe at the family reunion if I decide to, you know, it was just so you very were like a person of impact. Yes, yeah, so it was yeah. very like small um, spaces that I wanted to do, and I was just like, you know, and even then, like I said, I'm like, I don't have to teach, you know, mm -hmm. I just I do I gain this knowledge. Um, maybe I can help others go deeper into these poses, um, help others find their practice or whatnot, but. That was not my goal. And then it kind of, again, just kind of stumbled into that to where I just kept being presented with opportunities to teach. Oh, you should teach at this school. You should teach doing this, that, and the third. And then, um, again, Brandon um, reached out to me and was just like, hey, um, and prior to all of that, we were already doing um, trap yoga brunch at Red Rocks on H Street. What? What wait, how long were you guys doing that? So that started oh, let's say twenty seventeen. 
I think I left one of your events. I'm a part of this group, Size Game in DC. Mm, and we okay. did parties and events and stuff like mm. that. Velvet Lounge. Oh, yeah. Uh, Love, back in the day when Love was here, did events over at Love um, Stadium. Did oh, events yeah. over at Stadium. I love I love the energy. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, <yes. laughs> <laughs> and then um, there were a couple of events that we did. Because you remember, Red Rocks used to have all the brunches. Yes. Three levels yes. packed out. Exactly. All the day parties, drinks. Right. Yeah, 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 all the drinks. And so that's and the food was, was good, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, So that's cool. why I was bartending. So we may have passed mm-hmm. each other. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, and so we started, so that's whenever I introduced him to, mm-hmm. I was just like, hey, we should do this every Saturday um, here in this space. And it really... Um, just really blew up. It really was that weird, or did that make sense to do the yoga in Red Rocks? Because right, that's right. an open space concept. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the time, mm-hmm. someone was hosting, um, like let's say hit workouts there once a month okay. on the second floor. Okay. And so I knew that that space could you know offer that, mm-hmm. and it was obviously a very unique space. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, okay, because um, I ha- I like to think outside of the box. I like to think a little bit outside the picture. So I was just like, hey, we should um, do this. I know they stopped having these events. Um, and let's have brunch afterwards, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's um, get a sponsorship with Absolute and let them sponsor maybe a mimosa and a shot after, you know, post-class. That's and dope. And and we got all of those things, and it really just took off. So we were doing that from twenty about twenty seventeen mm-hmm. until yeah until the pandemic. Dang. Yeah, so that's Dang. how that ended. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's how that that's, ended. That's technically a high note, though. Yes, because I think what the pandemic did, and the reason I say this is, I used to run Velvet Lounge, mm-hmm. right? When it shut down due to the pandemic, there was a part of me that felt, oh, we don't have to make a decision on when to shut this down or when to stop business. We get to move on. Mm -hmm. And the only explanation is, it's the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come here, come here. So it's the pandemic. Yeah, yeah like come relationships here. don't get to run their course if things are mm-hmm, going mm-hmm. south. Yeah, uh, you get to, to sit down. You don't have to spend money anymore yeah. for a certain amount of time. Yeah, was your heart deeply connected with that event? Because twenty seventeen to twenty twenty is a is quite some time to have been making a space and facilitating it as it builds. Mm-hmm. It was connected to the community. Okay. Um. So it's more the community's more than it was yours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was. That was more. Yeah, I was definitely more connected to, and I felt that loss as like, oh, I don't have this opportunity to just see my friends, this person, this person, th- these people that come mm-hmm. and expect to heal together, grow together, and then have a drink afterwards together yeah um that's what i missed i wasn't so much connected to the space but it was definitely an end of an era we reminisce over these times often you know we find it so funny and just think about like yeah that time we and this time whenever you you know all of those times and it's nice because exactly like you said we don't have to worry about okay this is getting yeah. Oh, this is yeah. stale. Like let's <laughs> let's move on. Like what are we doing next? Like, you know. Yeah. And so that is the beauty of it. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, I think about it. I think about it from time to time. But um you know, I'm big on non-attachment. Okay. I was getting that from you. I was getting, I'll come up with the idea, but like, once it's born, y'all yeah. got away. Yeah. It's not yeah. me. I'm good, all right? Exactly. Gucci. Yeah. 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 So, mm, definitely. So going from bartending to yoga to now facilitating spaces on mental health and wellness Mm -hmm. what did being a part of total truth mean to you and the reason i ask this is i never whenever i work with people or we do things that are cool i'm never like nah we them boys i'm very much like hey what's everyone's honest feeling on what we're trying to accomplish and Mm -hmm. is that heading in the right direction Mm -hmm. um so I think it was such a dynamic space mm-hmm. um, in time. Um, 
obviously you know that we teach or well, if you don't know um, we have we educate them yes uh, <laughs> we have every Sunday trap yoga uh -huh. and uh, R&B yoga at the, Morrow, at the Morrow Hotel at 10 and 11.30 a.m. okay cool every single Sunday mm -hmm. um, and it is such a great and beautiful edifice, you know, it's a beautiful space that we're in. Um, what does edifice mean? Um, you know, establishment, place, oh, okay. um, you know, buildings, room, okay. you know. If I don't use the word much, I'm going to ask for the meaning. Keep oh, yeah, 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 no, uh, no problem. Um, and so it is, it's all those things and we have it there. We have a great community that has followed us from Trap Yoga Brunch to this space that we are now at the Marble Hotel every Sunday. Um, and so us having those spaces we do have a large following of women black women um and black men um everyone's in queer the straight everything yeah. that comes but the black men that come are you know like 10 to 1 so you know mm -hmm. so it's just like they're just, literally a representation of the dc population <laughs> of men versus women yes yes yeah. and thankfully um being that us as teachers Brandon and I they get to see mm -hmm. two black men yeah leading these spaces so even with that that is you know different exciting for some um jarring for maybe others just like wait I thought it was only skinny white women that are leading these spaces or you know maybe a hippie looking black woman or like you know or black man you know but Instead, you get these two cool guys, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, that are from Howard that are playing trap and R&B, all of your favorite songs, yeah. you know, and, and it you guys is are killing it. And thank you. And you it's a safe space. It. It's yeah. a safe space. And that's what we like to cultivate. So bringing in your events, that truth circle, it was just a whole nother like mind blowing moment mm -hmm. So where it's just like. We need more of this, yeah. you know, just specific to black men yeah. to where even if we are just listening to sound bowls, moving our bodies through yoga, mm -hmm. um, screaming and letting out some pent up aggression that we didn't beating even your body, no, beating, beating your, your chest. chest. Yeah. Yo. Like, <laughs> I was, like, I was like, yo, that was the highlight for me, yes, man. That, like, when we were what? jumping up and down, I was like, ooh, I'm back in boxer right, right now. Right. I said, hold up. Hold right. up. So I got to calm down. I got to exactly. calm down. No, yeah, no. Nah, and that's yeah. the thing. Like, it was, at first, I think we were all kind of like, okay, well, okay, like, this is, is this awkward? Is, this, is everyone No, nah, no, nah, we were and all then it was on just the same like, page. We're yeah, just, nah, like, nah. moving it. We like, got on the same page very quickly. quickly very very quickly. quickly. Yeah. The transition from... You know, short meditation at the beginning, moving our body all Shout the way. Shout out to Tay. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Everything. And then moving all the way to how we ended it with you and the way you led that meditation so beautifully through a story. Yeah, it was just something that really like, you know, can try to be imitated, but it can't be, you know. It's just, I hope people imitate it. Yeah. Because, well, let me let you finish and then I'll explain why I hope people Well, you know, it. it's just it's just a beautiful thing to where it's, I, I want everyone mm -hmm. to see this and I want, you know, more of it, not only for my peers, but even for me, you know, like, I feel like we all are needing that space to heal as well especially as healers mm -hmm. um we don't always have that space to just sit and be in another healing space because we're always you know doing um the yoga and leaving and guiding the meditation for whomever and um, oftentimes we just don't have those times to you know actually just be still and someone pour into us all the time especially someone that looks like us so or like can relate and feel the frustration or pain that we may or may not speak about so yeah so thank you i'm i'm very much uh when we make these spaces and we do these things most of the work i do 
isn't about the popularity contest or making something that's such a big idea. You hold on to it as tight as you can. I'm really good at what's the gray area that's not being filled mm -hmm. or the spaces that need to be served. And once I see they're being served, I'm moving on to the next thing. Because like where we are now is where the world is eventually going to get to. Absolutely. Right? So when it comes to wellness and mental health, those are two ideas that I think aren't put together often because of the scams that have been associated with the wellness community in terms of like Bikram yoga and the past and the mm -hmm. scam that came out with that. Like, right. I was just watching of, that. Movie. Yo, and it's, <laughs> it, it's wild. Cause it's like, no, you can see how people would let, would turn belief into you don't need to know what's right or wrong anymore because you have this thing you're holding on to mm -hmm. and when it comes to mental health there's a very dark past of how black people were experimented on yes there's a very yes. dark past of how there were shrinks and psychiatrists that took advantage of people after they learned these things about them and there mm -hmm. there wasn't a um what's the word i'm looking for you know when like hippo laws like mm -hmm. hey this is what doing the right thing looks like right. yeah. respecting someone's privacy not sharing things and unfortunately when it comes to therapists and therapy and mental health there's a fear within the community of should I, I as a therapist have to be careful of giving people advice because what if they take that advice as scripture and they say, well, I ran my life according to this advice. And it's like, no, that advice I gave you was for this very specific moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for you to live your entire life by. Right. It was for you to live this one frustration of not having to deal with your family mm -hmm. during the holiday season yes. as someone that has grown into this different person right. and making space for, hey, I'm not saying let's not have the conversation. Let's just have it two weeks after yeah. Yeah. my happy time with all the family. Mm -hmm. And I swear I'll try my best to actually be available for that phone call. Exactly. And, and get my like, full self to it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Like um, when you do classes like what you do and you add mental health to it, mm -hmm. there's going to be a certain amount of population of people that have never gone to therapy right? versus the population that is deep into therapy. right? And what I want to do is I want to create that middle ground where we can have a discussion of what's going on in our lives and has the advice from therapy worked. Mm -hmm. right? If it hasn't worked, are you including more people in the topic that is you as a person and allowing us to discuss that without you being judged? Right. You feel me? Like, one of my folks, after they saw uh, we did the space, they called me from Japan and they mm. were like, hey, is your thing truly a safe space? I said, what do you mean? They said, I have friends that are trans. Can they pull up? I said, yeah, they could pull up. But if you need me to make an announcement that all trans folks and gay folks and they, thems mm -hmm. and pronouns are welcome, that's sure. But like on my platform, I have trans people that like I have interviewed that right. I have real relationships right. with that will be coming back. I hope they know they belong in the space right. that we're doing. Right. Um, we have husbands and fathers, mm -hmm. two very different mm -hmm. things. Right. Husbands and fathers <laughs> yes. pulled up to the space and they were like, you know, as a dad, this is a new space for me of trying to figure out like, hey, am I doing good enough as a dad in a world that's not no longer making space for men? Mm -hmm. I think it's the better way to put it than they don't love us. They're not making space for us now. We dominated as right, men. Right, right, right. And now women are like, now I need some of my yeah, get back. Yeah, I'm claiming my time. But unfortunately, the get back that a lot of women are executing, men that have nothing to do with their past are paying that. And it's like, fam, I have nothing to do with your trauma, but I'd like to be your mm -hmm. friend if you want me to be. Right. But if not, we don't need to interact if you're going to be slashing pounds of flesh every single time I say what's up to you. Yeah. And you tell yeah. me that you love me, but love yeah. seems to be a little bit painful today. Mm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. like, that's that's why I want to hear the opinions of the folks who I work with mm -hmm. and the people that attend. Because, like, I don't know if they told you, I I have, like, a crazy, a crazy schedule for next year. Like, all men's spaces, can we get... 12 to 14 events mm. all women's spaces including myself can yeah. we do 12 to 14 events and by the middle of the end everyone figure out do i need to be a part of this right or can we do this by ourselves and we just need like a therapist and maybe a woman advocate that may be known in the community that works for them mm -hmm. everyone figuring out hey can we get this sponsor because i don't want everyone to go broke over a good idea right 
Yes. <laughs> word, that's the word. Right. A good idea shouldn't come at the sacrifice of, hey, are my lights going to be on or off? Because like, Absolutely we want to serve the community, but all of a sudden we don't get to eat anymore. Absolutely. Like, nah, we, we got that. to. We can't do that. Yeah, we can't go broke trying yeah. to feed the community. And then community. what does a co-ed version of this look like? Mm. Like, those are things I'm working on right now. So that's why I was like, nah, come and have the interview. I want to hear your opinion. I want to see your thoughts. I want to hear your feelings. Mm -hmm. Because, like, what we dive in and delve in is we are bringing feelings to life. Yeah. And that's hard. It's and hard. That's, and that's also dangerous. Because, yes. like, yeah. it's up there with hope. Hope mm -hmm. is one of the most dangerous drugs that we all have access to. Absolutely. So it's like, you know, how are you going to handle that hope? Yeah. And, you know, hope is a very interesting word, too, because obviously there's faith mm -hmm. and then there's hope because we can all have faith. Oh, I believe this is going to happen. But then once you have hope, that is whenever it's internalized. Like, I believe this will happen for me. Yeah. You know, and so I think that is something that, you know, people have faith in different things. Um, and that's great. But are you hopeful? Do you believe that it will happen for you? And I think that is something that's, Going into those safe spaces, I think everyone should be hopeful that, you know, I will be able to be vulnerable and mm -hmm. come into this safe space and release something. And that's something that I always say in my classes um, during the meditation that I start with. You know, it's just like, you know, you may not be able to release whatever is going on right now, whatever is going on outside of this room, outside in the world, at home with your kids, with your husband, with your mate, like, you know. But maybe by the end of this practice, because yeah. it may not happen at the end of this meditation, it may not happen at during like, you know, crow pose or anything like that. But hopefully by the end, yeah, you can leave something yeah. on the mat and hopefully. leave it there. Hopefully. hopefully. That's my <laughs> and that's just, my just try hope. your best. Just try your best. Yes. Please just try right. your best. And, and I believe with my hope that someone will and has done that. And um Similarly with um, how I came to you and I'm like, wait, I wasn't expecting this little, t you know what? Like, you, when you, you know? did that, I, w I wanted to pull you to the side and be like, are you okay? But then I was like, nah, I got to go to work. I was like, I got to leave. I got to leave. Good you know, you know. I was like, we'll talk. Yes, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. But, and you know, people have done that for me and I'm like, mm -hmm. really like, you know, at what point, you know? And I'm like, I don't even need to know all that. Like, I'm glad that you was able to release. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm glad you felt something. Right. Because, like, I just remember before we got there, the space was already good. Right, right. And it's very easy to mess up a good thing. <laughs> and ironically, I was actually supposed to talk. I was supposed to do a 40 minute to 50 minute discussion mm. with you guys. Right. But what happened is everyone's time ran over and I only had 10 minutes. Mm. That mean I had to fit everything I was going to discuss with you. And I was going to make it an interactive discussion from 40 minutes into 10 minutes. Wow. And say, wow, you guys got this. Be careful of the stuffing and the turkey. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's why I was like, right. I remember seeing the dynamic of everyone just finished closing their eyes. Tay finished doing the sound bowl and he did a phenomenal job and this was right after brandon and my boy my boy mm -hmm, Britt. Mm -hmm, he just mm -hmm. he just they finished up the yoga yeah and like i think they did a great job dually ha handling the class a dual class of yeah. two yogis because like yeah. i've seen yogis not get along in the middle right. of trying to do a class yeah. and be like hey, what are you guys doing right 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 <laughs> you know, okay, you know, <laughs> yes. and then i had to finish up and i was like Go ahead, go back to laying down on your mats, guys. We're not done. Gotta close your eyes one more time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I, I came in there with a completely different message. And from what I saw going on in the room, I said, okay, this is what everyone actually needs to. Yes. yes. So what what you guys heard was zero percent of everything I had written down for you guys mm. for that discussion. Mm. Well, you should have took all your forty to fifteen minutes because I don't think <laughs> anyone, no one would have mind, no one would have mind. You know, it was, it, and that ten, even if it was fifteen minutes um, that you held for us. Yeah. Like. Yeah, phenomenal. I, I, I was literally that. telling my cousin about it today, like, you know, and this is what he happened. It was so beautiful the way he told the story. And, you know, I've, I've never been in a space to where whether that's therapy or meditation or anything like that to where it was led like that. So that was something new for me, but I'm sure for a lot of other brothers that were there, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was 
really something special and so timely. <laughs> so timely. And I mean, even before, like, you know, then we're going into another holiday season. Mm, Christmas. Yes. Yeah. And that, and that again, can be well, a Well, this barrier. coming out in, like, February. Okay, but, okay. But yeah, Christmas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's going to be, there's the, there's the, um, and I don't know if you deal with this, but there is a frustration that comes from, I'm supposed to update everyone who I love, mm -hmm. hopefully who I love, mm -hmm. who's in this room with what I've been through for 365 yeah. days, mm -hmm. which that means it's 364 and everyone gets this one day. And we didn't really, we mutually didn't really pick up the phone and just talk. Right, right. Not we didn't once. really check in. We didn't really send text messages. My mom is a very business mindset, concise person. So when she calls me, her caring is making sure, hey, man, there's food in your fridge, right? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Why haven't you taken care of this thing? All right, I got to go because I'm working. Mm -hmm. Consistent. Jamaican woman, consistently working. Yeah. Like, no matter what. Like, she works so much. I don't think my work ethic is half mm. of what she mm -hmm. does. And you you see how much I'm working yes, all the time. Yes, yeah. But that's wow. that's just who she is. So it's like... I keep that in mind that for every one Jamaican mom I have, there's someone who has a Russian mom. There's someone who has <laughs> yes. a Korean mom. Yes. There's someone who has an African mom. Mm -hmm. There's someone that has an American mom. Yeah. And there's someone who's close to us that can't see past, are they okay? All the way to the, okay, now that they're okay, what's actually going on with them? Yeah. 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 And for a lot of people in our families and for a lot of the world, it's, well, he said he was okay, so that's it. And it's right. like, fam, okay is a very large word mm -hmm. that's understated. So after I'm okay, how do you guys feel about me? Because there's a, there's a certain amount of projection that happens into, well, if you're so okay, why aren't you more successful? Well, right. if you're so okay, why is your relationship not further along? Mm -hmm. If you're mm -hmm. so okay... How come you've been putting on some weight? Right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yes, no, literally. And, and whenever you express it to them, like, well, this is going on, and, mm -hmm. you know, which, well, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you... Well, I mean, did you ask? That, was that, was this were you space? A, were you around enough, and did we yes. facilitate enough of a relationship for yes. you to feel or be in position to ask and actually receive it when yes. it was going on in my and life? And to receive it yeah. is a major thing yeah. to it, yes. Yeah. Because oftentimes, um, you know, you want to express these things mm -hmm. that mom like this is going on i'm i'm sad or you know this is like i'm i'm working because this the lights need to be on you know yeah. and it's just like well why don't you tell me and then whenever you express it it's like you know maybe upset or just not in that space to receive to where girl if like, i told you what was you gonna do about right, it exactly not like you nothing, think you like, think i want my parent that's raised me to have to bend exactly. over backwards because no. i'm trying to figure things exactly. out no, exactly I, I actually like watching you sleep and get rest and exactly i'm I like trying to watching, encourage you i like that. watching you be appreciated for your work exactly yeah and my mistakes don't have to be your responsibility even if you gave birth to right. me or right. even if you've raised me right right and a lot of people can't find that middle space of damn this adult because that's what you are now has a point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's very much no you should have let me nah I right. for me I've had to struggle with that and figure out hey man there's an emergency and there's nah you're good I, very mm -hmm. manageable it's not right. an emergency right. just because you feel uncomfortable at this news that you just got included on it, it still could have just been an email, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Could have yeah, just been literally. an email. This, this yeah. could have been a text. It's, it's not that serious. We can relax. Everybody calm down. <laughs> Everybody calm down. But also, I realized, too, that everyone isn't always, one, in the space to receive. And then oh. it's also about a matter of, like, how you deliver those messages, you yeah. know? And obviously, you can't just, you can't know how everyone is going to react to every situation, but... In certain situations, are you have to ask like, are you ready to like? Can we have this conversation? Are you in a space to receive yeah. um, this? Um, or like, even if they are in a space to receive it, our tone, you know, and it's a matter of like, okay, well, I know my mom's gonna be upset if I just come out with these things, like, da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, that's not gonna land well because she's gonna be overwhelmed and frustrated, and mm -hmm. you know, to where it's just like, well, this is how I feel about this, and I understand that you may look at it this way, but this, you know, there's ways to deliver these messages, these hard conversations that we. Or not, it don't even always have to be a hard conversation. Sometimes just comes the easy conversation. Or the hard hardest. Too. Yeah. Yeah, or just to articulate. So, you know, those types of conversations, those are tone and different things can be hard, but I think we just have to be cognizant of like 
sometimes how we want to say it even if we're completely 100,000 percent right mm -hmm. you know it's a matter of like okay is this the right time mm -hmm. am i in the right space am i angry right now or upset you know mm -hmm. so yeah is there a certain amount of the community of yogis you come across that are people pleasers oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> like the evil what you just said that <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to because mm -hmm. I feel like so many people um, from you my experience on this camera, by the way, you're killing it right now. Just <laughs> <laughs> like I hit this angle. I was like, that's a damn good angle. Thank you. That's yeah, a, no, that's I a appreciate damn good angle. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I have pimple patches on and everything. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm like, we can be so up, secure. You showed up as who you are. You showed up Thank as who you, you are. That's, you, that's you, Gucci. That's all I can right? do. <laughs> that's all I'm like. Get pimple on my face, you know, the scar. Like, it's, yeah. it is what it is. It's, it's me. It's me, so, um, but yeah, I have to always show up my full self as much as I can. Um, but, and that's what I think so many people in the yoga community don't always do, or they show try up to- Show full selves. Mm-hmm. Because they want to- show up as who they think people they would like them to be. want them to be, or what they, the yogi should be, or mm -hmm. like, how they were taught and their guru or yoga instructor or the studio wants them to be. And um, I'm so thankful to have a space to where I can be myself fully every Sunday. And mm -hmm. um, just, or just like try new things and not be shunned or frowned upon because I wanted to incorporate mantra cards or just do an hour class of meditation. We just laying here. Yeah. You know, um, and so that's great, but there is a sense of, yeah, disingenuousness with some yogis. I'm not saying everyone is like this. And, it's an um, observation. Yeah, it's just yeah. an observation, you know, that I see that in some spaces. Even some yogis aren't even afraid to speak out about things that are going on in the world. Wars, famines, you know, different things. And because they just want to not disrupt or upset a certain type of community that comes to their class or someone that may feel some type of way. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, not saying that those spaces are for like, you know, to have those conversations, but whether that's even your social media or something like that, maybe you're afraid to speak out about it. I think you should, if you want to, if that's something close to your heart, mm -hmm. um, you should have the liberty to do that and show up as yourself, you know, be genuine, you know, and not to be put into a box, not be put into a box of, oh, well, I'm a yogi. I, I need to be about the peace or even whenever people, because people will try to weaponize that against yogis as well. You mean them standing for something? No, them, um, them being a yogi and you shouldn't be upset. You should be, you know, peaceful. Why are you getting into, you know? So standing for something doesn't make you less peaceful. Exactly. That just means that you actually feel for what's happening in the world around you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But when you're there for a service, there is this dehumanization thing that does happen, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in the space of what we do when it comes yeah. to wellness, when Absolutely. it comes to serving the community. And that fear is real when you realize, hey man, this person who pays me may not show up and may spread bad reviews on me for the thing that I'm teaching and that directly affects my quality of life. Right. And that is scary. That is scary. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how do you we deal have to with be that? Cognizant of it. Um if you don't want to answer, let me know. But No, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm I mean like, since you're here. Yeah, no, I really don't have that problem i thankfully again i don't um i never had to have those conversations or like that fear that monkey on my back of like oh i have to not say something i have to not be this way or anything just be the shell of a person because we are human. We have a range of emotions, you know, and I mean, they talk, God talked about emotions in the Bible and people do think like, oh, well, we don't talk about emotions. We don't talk about this. And no, I, I talk about it. I'm sad. Um, I'm not happy right now. Or this is going on. And 
coming into those spaces to where it is like, okay, I may be feeling this way. I'm facilitating this class and maybe me being vulnerable and expressing exactly how I'm feeling, maybe not laying it all out there. Like, this is what made me sad. And she said this about me and this is going on over there, you know, but just coming into the space vulnerable will give someone else the chance to be vulnerable. So I haven't had, maybe it's because I have not worked in maybe some of the, you know, big room, the power core, you know, all these different places to where I have to fit into this mold and yeah, be the shell of a person to where I'm just in there doing X, Y, and Z and they wanted these 20 something poses in this order, you know, I don't have that. So I can't really, you know, I can't relate. I can't. Just, <laughs> I was gonna say it's okay to say it. You can't relate. I was like, just, tip towing. Yeah, tip -toe just, just, just you can't relate. It's okay. Yeah, that's not my ministry. Yeah. I don't have to. But do that's a place that you've worked hard to be able to say your opinion and Absolutely. not affect your business. Absolutely. Because people understand who you are when you're in there and when you're not. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it translates. People see that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even if, I mean, I have multiple social medias for different things um tell me more and i do well, i have my personal i have my um in my yoga page my mm -hmm. yoga instagram and better healing 777 on instagram i was gonna say you uh, better plug you yes. better plug it. um and i struggle with that initially to where it's just like okay well i need to have this persona of this yogi this holistic person da 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 then i'm gonna have my personal page that's gonna have you know me traveling and doing all these fun things as well and what i've come to realize people want to see that personality people want to yeah. see who the person is behind mm -hmm. the camera who this this pose is and beyond the sutras that i may be trying to put on on um, my page and you know let's talk about non-attachment today let's talk about releasing you know that's all well and dandy but it's just like okay but who are you outside of this do you have kids do you like brunch like what do you like to do for fun you travel like you know well let's see you doing this by christ the redeemer you know like are you allergic to cats are you allergic to cats do you have yeah. a dog you know so i realize um that you know i just can't be this you know this something that i've saw or thought i needed to be you know let me be myself mm -hmm. you know let me show the people more let me gain you know a following just by being myself showing up fully mm -hmm. you know so that's what i've learned and i try to carry that into like i said my classes mm -hmm. to social media everywhere as i show up at work and to this interview every day i try to do that as someone within the wellness community who supports you I am blessed to have a community of <laughs> brothers yeah. and sisters that do support me and, like I said, encourage me to try and take that class, do that interview, you know, like, let's talk about it. let's heal the world, you know. Um, Are you a let's heal the world person or do they just say that to you and you're like, I'm, I'm going to go heal things. And then you like put band-aids on things. I, I, I don't try to be that person okay because I, I, I was like that is a huge responsibility yes and i can't i yeah. can't do that um i'm still trying boundaries. to yes exactly boundaries, and i've yeah. set boundaries and i'm still working on boundaries for myself boundaries mm -hmm. are hard to set and then hard to keep okay so um now this is the other part of the wellness discussion mm, i wanted to have and yeah. the reason i'm doing that we're going to get back to your point yeah Every time someone, when I say wellness, people view yoga, soundbowl meditation, which is better than where we were five years ago. It's a great right, space right, to be right, in, right. right? And there's more people of color, especially mm -hmm, in D.C. Mm -hmm. I think for us in D.C., though, we're spoiled by so many representations of people Definitely. of color that once you get outside of the inner cities, period, mm -hmm. in general, you're like, oh, it's not a lot of us yeah. in this space, is it? We just, we's in the city. Yeah. And yeah. we made dope things <laughs> and then we all showed up. Area, Got yes. you. <laughs> so what does wellness look like implemented in your life when it's not sound bowl meditation and yoga mm -hmm. and just meditation in general it is 
boundaries it is you know holding space just for me that solitude that we talked about um prayer meditation reading um and then not only yes it may be the yoga sutras but i'm also reading um right now the garden within um and that talks about you know the garden that is here in our heart and you know us watering that soil and there's different types of soil so it's a whole bunch of things but i'm reading that as well because i do need to be sped, fed spiritually mentally physically like it's the whole thing mind body and soul and you know we can go to church and do all this spiritual things but what about we're not moving our bodies we're moving our bodies in yoga but we're not feeding ourselves in other ways even that's reading you know it doesn't have to be a religion or anything but yeah. i feel like everything is a balance and i know that during our the truth circle it was a question brought up about hygiene and someone brought up you know, mental hygiene. Yes, that yeah. hygiene mentally yeah, told everyone and that resonated so that. much yeah. um, because we don't sit and think and clean out those spaces of it's just like, well, why am I so upset? Why am I feeling this way mm -hmm. in these moments? So whenever this person comes around, we don't sit with that. Yeah. But those emotions that come and stir up, you know, within us. And so I really try to just sit and take inventory, do a scan, mm -hmm. whether that's in the morning or throughout the day. It's just like, okay, well, how am I feeling? What is this feeling that's coming up? Do you say this out loud or is it just in your head? It's out loud, inwardly, sometimes I mean, it really just depends. You have your own apartment, but <laughs> having your own apartment doesn't mean that like you talk out loud. There's people who have their own apartments that won't say a word to themselves. Oh, I talk to myself. Yeah. I talk to myself and Oftentimes, yeah, I do get up and I realize like, huh, I didn't say two words all day and it's four o'clock, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then I realize my voice raspy and I mean, like, <laughs> you know, that's fine. You know, I don't, I'm not mad at it sometimes, but it's just like, huh, yeah. I really didn't like talk to anyone. It was emails, it was texts, it was whatever. And, you know, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but we also need that human interaction. So, yes, I run. I'm part of a run club. I do do things that just feed me and I'm big on community. OK. Um, and so um, I like things that are community based that really helps in part of my, you know, mental that I have to do to just get myself right. You know, okay. if I if I don't get a chance to do get my run in or do my hit workout or come to class and teach on Sundays, you know, I'm like, hmm, I'm a little off. And then I have to do that skin. Like, OK, what is it that's making me feel this way? That's feeling off today. Oh, well, maybe it's because I didn't move my body the way that I'm used to. Let me put on these running shoes. Let me get my mat, you know, mm -hmm. and pull in front of the TV, my little space or whatever it may be. And. You know, and it doesn't have to be a long time. It doesn't have to be miles and miles that I'm running. It doesn't have to be an hour yoga session. It just, you know, something to just check in and be like, okay. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. So what's an example of you enforcing or reinforcing your boundaries that you've worked on? Because you are a person in work. Hmm. If you wouldn't mind sharing boundaries are hard okay and i think it's always something that we all have to work on you know it's a continuous thing especially if you're setting a new boundary with something that you may not have wanted to set a boundary with you know it's just like okay damn like i didn't want to be in this space and have to cut you off or um you know just say no to all these other jobs because I am tired. Yeah. I need to sleep. Major. Um, and I'm a part of the nap ministry. I will take a nap in a minute. <laughs> I will take a nap. That is a part of my boundary. Like I need to reset. Okay, yes, I will go out tonight. But I'm taking a nap first. Uh, I just picture you walking to your car saying, Nap, is that you? <laughs> right. Hearing the keys yeah. jingle, oh yes. snap. Yes. The nap's coming. <laughs> Running to my couch. <laughs> yes. Um, and that's the part of my boundary. It's just like, okay, well, we want to go out. We want to do all these things. Mm -hmm. um, time boundaries. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take a nap first, y'all. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay. I'm going to 
the party will be there, mm -hmm. you know, or I will meet you out. I, I don't have mm -hmm. to come to this pregame or yeah. do X, Y, and Z, like be at all the things to, I'm, I'm gonna see y'all there. You see that, right? In order to have your time boundary, that means that you have to put that fear of missing out on the mm -hmm. shelf because it's really okay. And FOMO's real. Yeah. The FOMO's real. Fear yeah. of missing out is very real. And, and that is a boundary that I had to set for myself as well. But setting those boundaries is a choice, you know, every day. Because it could be easy to send that text. Yeah. Whenever you get lonely, hey. Come over, you yeah. know, what you doing? Uh, come take my time that yeah. I get to myself. Exactly, yeah. that I need to myself. Um, so it is a choice that um, I make mm -hmm. with my boundaries. Yeah. And if I fail, or I won't even say fail, if I don't meet the bar, if I miss my mark, mm -hmm. it's about showing myself grace, where it's just like, okay, yeah and then also understanding your situation i uh say this to my mom i have two moms mm -hmm. i have my first mom and my adopted mom that was actually who i was with before we pulled up to do the interview i was like oh, hey, nice. let's, let's meet up later because yeah. i gotta take care yeah of absolutely we did our gift exchange before i came oh, over nice, here so nice, that was great nice. and i was telling her i was like you know i'm a lot less healthy because i i have a work boundary i will i will work mm -hmm. like you remember when rihanna was like work work yeah. work 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 yes. she's talking about me right <laughs> so so like you see it cameras mm -hmm. everywhere lights mm -hmm. everywhere studios cleaning up everything yeah. i'm very much like always working on edits if not edits always studying something if not studying my partner she'll tell you the stuff i watch for fun that's actually her photo right there mm, but the beautiful. stuff yes. thank you the stuff i watch for fun is educational but i'm like fascinated by that because i'm just like if you don't fall in love with the things you're working on it's actually going to be quite hard for you to take the next step because when you take the next step in business or in relationships mm -hmm. you already have been practicing the muscle and looking at the thing and obsessing over how do i get there and by the time you get there you don't realize you're already it right because that's what obsession and passion is right. so i'm very good on hey how do i plant the seeds to always foster my interest in a different section of the thing or something adjacent to what i'm interested in so mm -hmm. once i handle it myself i'm just like oh no nah, i heard about that yeah oh yeah no nah, i did the research on that actually right. i know that story i heard that five <laughs> weeks ago you actually bring that up kind of late let me tell you the other right. details right. yeah so i know for me that's like my issue but with that being said time boundaries are so important and i was telling my mom i'm getting better at just letting go and not doing stuff like mm -hmm. right now sitting in the cut i have like seven interviews to work on you're the eighth interview mm. my partner has a surgery that's coming up in february march so i mm. know i'm gonna take a break but in the meantime i have like all these other great things i'm working on but it's like hey you're gonna get a chance to not care about the great things in february and march because like right, right. you're not gonna have people coming in out of the space mm -hmm. but i'll have things to edit right exactly. i have a different way to repurpose my time mm -hmm. and then eventually i'll give myself a break and hang out with my homies i yeah. was talking to brandon the other day and i was like hey we need to figure out times to just hang out with each other and Absolutely. see what's going on in everyone's life Absolutely. because i've been a part of teams where we were so focused on what we were doing with get home safe and mental health that we weren't considering any of ourselves in the picture of what we were doing and we were accomplishing all these things we did all these events we got like a little bit under 45 people or something mm -hmm. like that in the therapy that year but everyone looked exhausted yeah and i was like yeah. that is disgusting yeah because yeah. like how could you be so impactful but be oh so wrong. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's what we're saying. I'm like, it's, it, that's why we need those spaces to where it's just like, yeah. we're pouring into all these people all the time. And it's just like, that's great. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, when do we get a chance to just sit back and be still yeah. and listen to someone just pour into us, feed into us. And then even if we do, like you said, we need to be more intentional about hanging out, just checking in, finding out. Facilitating joy. Yes, we exactly. Can't, we can't give these people moments of joy and ecstaticness and just, I'm so glad that I made it. And in our private lives, not checking up to be like, hey, were you able to smile today? Mm -hmm. Not because you saw business, but because you were just in a room with people that you like. Right. It's right. very, it's, one of the most important things you can do in business, especially our business, because mm -hmm. we do work in very intimate spaces, mm -hmm. 
I actually enjoy the people that are there. Right. And we, <laughs> take it, we take it for granted so often. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, like, yes, this is a great guy. Like, he's so cool. But it's all right. See you later. Like, I'm going to come to class one day. Yeah. Or like, I mean, you know, whatever. And it's just like, okay, ah. like, let's just, let's just sit. Ah. Let's just, ah. yeah, like, actually be intentional with going to class. Like, mm -hmm. and let's be like, let's get coffee. Can you have a moment? Like, let's just, yeah. 15, half, half hour, like, Let's just get a cup of coffee. Let's go to Union Market. Let's go to whatever. What's ironic because I think today is a month since we met each other. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I, I just thought about it. I was like thinking about the dates. I was like, all right, it's Christmas, a couple of... Oh, snap. This is Literally. 30 days. Right. This is 30 days? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, all in God's divine timing, you know, mm -hmm. everything happens when it's supposed to. Yeah. You know, and that is the beauty of life you know like mm -hmm. we can force or try to force things to happen try to put the triangle in the square space come on, but come on square it's not it's come not on square work. it's become not, a triangle right? yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna work out for us and, and yeah. we have to realize that and again show ourselves mm -hmm. grace you yeah. know and that's that i'm big on giving others grace, showing myself grace, because oftentimes we're all just trying to figure it out. We all trying to make it through this thing, life. Mm -hmm. um, we may not have the that example that we thought we should have or should have had. But again, that I'm understanding that and realizing it is another form of grace, love, boundaries. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I can't wear myself then trying to show up for all these people because I saw that um oprah does th did this and i'm trying to be this mogul like she her you know oprah. exactly she has so many resources I'm, i she mean but we all of people. we also have the same 24 hours that beyonce yeah, has yeah. you know so but again it's just like but that's beyonce like you yeah. said she has all these yeah. resources she and doesn't sleep when it comes to her practices <laughs> yes. but she takes real vacations yes. and let me tell you yeah. something she's not working on her vacation because no. she knows how important it is no yeah and you me, Beyonce, which is not a <laughs> sentence I thought I would say yes, today. Yeah. We all know how much rest we need to accomplish mm -hmm. what we need to. Mm -hmm. And we also know when we're towing a little bit too fine of a line in the stuff that we're doing. Like, ah, I should have chilled. Yeah. I did a little bit too much yeah. this week. Yeah, it, it shows <laughs> up. Maybe yeah. in the quality of work that we're giving to in those spaces where it's just mm -hmm. like someone can tell me like, Trenton, you're tired. You you look tired. And I'm like, I may feel it, but like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm tired. But I thought I did good. And it, was, it may have been a great class, mm -hmm. but it's just like, go home and get some rest, baby. You know, and some people have said that to me, like, baby, yeah, don't don't go to brunch. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. Sit, <laughs> sit down. Go home. <laughs> or, or me wearing a bonnet because my hair is a mess. Yeah, yeah. My hair is a mess. It's, no, I'll show it's you so look bad. Great. <laughs> no, no. My partner said, so you wearing a bonnet in this interview? I said, yeah, it's really bad, isn't it? She said, you go put that bonnet on, oh, baby. Yeah. Go put that bonnet on. Yes. I said, thank you. Because yes, so if I didn't know and I would have just been on camera, I would have been like, hey, you kind of linty today. No. Huh? <laughs> Look at you, looking like an inside-out pocket. No, no. <laughs> hey, and Monique, no one going to talk about nobody wearing their bonnet. Because we are in our own spaces. Oh, man. Yes. When that happened, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to mind my business on this one because okay. she wilding. Look, and I, I would be, I would be one of the ones wearing my bonnet out at the airport. Like, wait, I gotta. Okay, I was in, I was in my bonnet I'm take it off. Uber. I was in my bonnet exchanging gifts. I was in my bonnet <laughs> eating wings today. I actually right. got to put up some wings in the fridge. Ooh, you know, my, yes. bonnet, my, my, my bonnet going everywhere today. And, and that's okay. Wear your bonnet. Speaking right. of bonnet, let's talk about R and B. Why mm. R and B and yoga? That was fascinating to me when you said that. I said. Break down to me an R and B and yoga class and what that has done for you. Well, the thing about music mm -hmm. is that it has such healing properties to it. Yeah. Um, you know, whether that's Andre 3000 and his flute, mm -hmm. yep. Janae Aiko mm -hmm. and her sound bowls, yeah. Salon. Like five, five, two, something exactly. like that. Like really, really small, yeah. Exactly. But impactful. 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 Right. impactful. Yeah. Standing on bars and dancing, impactful, <laughs> right? right? Right, or mm -hmm. or you know whether that's Solange and the way that she may go up. Yeah, and don't all, touch my hair. Yeah, my favorite tracks. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. All, all the way to maybe Usher or playing mm -hmm. the, you know, 
incorporated maybe some Trina and you know all of these things mm -hmm. to where it helps get you aligned to your favorite music we're doing the same you know movements and maybe different movements that you've never tried before but doing this because like you said some people may have never even entered a yoga studio yeah. some people may not have ever tried yoga or decided that they don't like it after they tried it the one time back in yeah. college or at this one studio and so being able to come and then you're just your guard is lowered a little bit by oh i like this song mm -hmm. and then i'm like okay well if you're singing at least i know you're breathing and then you realize okay let me just whoo okay relax a little bit more mm -hmm. and then we're hitting that warrior two or whatever pose that we're getting into and it's just like okay I, I like this. I can enjoy this. And you may come back again because, oh, I like that playlist that he played. And then it's just like, oh, well, I'm getting better at this practice. This, these movements are getting a little bit easier to me. Or my foot isn't hurting as much as it was two weeks ago before I came. Or I'm just not stressed out as much whenever I come to your class. And I realized that on Monday, you know. So being able to offer those spaces, a safe space for the community, black and white, because um, everyone so comes. in our class. Though, yes, right? yeah, you, yeah. Is he a regular? No. God, I hope to see him again. I saw him. Yeah. I was in a rush out. I was like, I feel like I should get his number, but I got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. I was like, I really hope he got what he was looking for here. Because I, I looked at the demographic and I was mm. like, to me, that's not a bad start. Yeah, you yeah. Know, three to four days before Thanksgiving, we had about 20 men in there all together. Everyone got something from the class, whether they partaked in it or not. Mm -hmm. Just being in the room, you could see everyone's spirit and mental shift. Yes, From absolutely. the convo and the interaction and what we did. And it's like, I just want to package that into an hour and a half mm -hmm. that we start mm -hmm. on time. AKA everyone <laughs> shows up on time. Right, right. And we do it. And then everyone says, oh my God, I'm looking forward to the next yeah, one. We yeah. say, see you next month. Right. Yes. <laughs> or yeah. we're able to do it every other week. But I really just want to want to maximize that. I'm sorry. We're going to go back to where you are. No, but yeah, it's just fine. like, I yeah. think about stuff like that. I'm like, it's oh, important. we're so close. It's important. And that's the thing. Like, And I think he had a great time because he did stay well after, you know, everyone He stayed else, well after. After everyone okay. left and was okay. just, you know, talking and just being mm -hmm. in that space. And I, I realized, like, whether you are black, white, the Indian, the, 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 the Chinese, Indian. Serve. Yes. And we everyone serve. wants that yeah space wants that community mm -hmm. and and i've realized like in other spaces that i've taught r&b yoga i'll be like "Ooh, well i'm at this fancy luxury apartment maybe i should tailor it and play paramore or play pa play this or and it's just like no they want our version they they, they want yeah. exactly what the service we're providing yeah and whenever i try to which I have, you know, I've tried to shift it to, oh, I'm at the university teaching today. Maybe I should play X, Y, and Z. And it's just like, my, and my playlist knows as well. No, we going back to, <laughs> <laughs> we going right back to Pharrell. We going right back to, you know, this. And it could be any number of combination of my playlist um, that it may fluctuate to. And I like building a playlist that starts very slow and gradually crescendos mm -hmm. up to where it right whenever we're hitting our peak pose yeah you may get that morris brown college band you mm -hmm. may get beyonce you may get trina mm -hmm. sexy red who knows but then we gonna tailor it back down and you're gonna be like wow i didn't even know that's what i needed right in that yes because we're pushing we're pushing we're driving it a little bit more to where it's very relaxing and you're we're gonna go right back to it mm -hmm. but for that peak pose you you're gonna need this little bit more this umph to get you through and yeah everyone enjoys it so what's your favorite beyonce album oh i love four 
Really? I do. Okay, okay. I do love four. I mean, I, there's, there's I a really, lot. I really like the one with six inch heels. Oh. That's like my jam. That was, um, what yeah, was that, Lemonade? That was that Lemonade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that lemonade, lemonade. That's, yeah, um, this most recent one, actually. Yeah, I, I love really Renaissance. Like yeah, I really I like this. I like, also love B-Day, too. With really? Kitty Cat. Okay, okay. okay. You saw uh, the track that she uh, just released last week? My House. Yeah, that, yes. I just, I like the end part. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, we both know yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, that's really black. I want I like this. Can I get another one? Another one? Thank you, please. Appreciate right. you. Well, even when yeah. in that song, she says, how can we heal the world if we can't heal ourselves? Yeah. She says that right in the middle. I, of always, I some... always hear that the loudest. I'm like, dang. It's man, true. Beyonce, Beyonce doing it. It's true. And Beyonce, we, we, we got to do the work. Yeah. Beyonce, <laughs> we have to do the work. We have to do the work. And even yeah. um, in the remix of um, Break My Soul mm -hmm. um, whenever with, that she has with Madonna, she talks about like, Give all your anxiousness. Give it to me. Give your, you know, stress. Give it to me. You know, mm -hmm. the, we have to release those things. And oftentimes that's what I try to be that space in class as well to where it's just like, you can give me your trouble, that burden or whatever. I may be able to release it a little bit I was just about to easier. ask how do you release yourself from that after doing all that work because you don't just do one class you do multiple classes right, yeah it's multiple classes yeah. um, and that emotional burden does show up physically it does manifest I, I, I told my mom I told my mom I'm like I feel like a pastor a preacher after mm -hmm. doing all that because you know obviously we're moving our body but there's a level vocally of that I'm giving every yeah. time you know and you can relate to to where it's just like you're pouring into different spaces and out of places that it's just like I may be struggling with this myself and I need to like I'm saying this because I need to release it or someone poured this into me and I'm giving it to you guys um but sometimes after all of that and I come from like a family of preachers and different things like that. So I'm around that. And so in your I, family. Mm, mm, okay. Uncles. Yeah. Was that a beautiful like, experience for you? It was, it was an experience. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was in the granted, thankfully, like my parents weren't directly into it, but yes, mm -hmm. uncles, so uh, Jason. all the sides. Yes. Yeah. Everything like that. Even now, um, I'm very close knit with all of my family and very religious family still to this day. Um, and so I realized like, I just need to go home and take a nap. Yeah. And so that's what my Sundays are very much incorporated with now, like to where I'll teach the classes, mm -hmm. I'll get some ramen or pho or like whatever comfort food that I'm craving that day. Yeah. Um, go so home. this is your self care routine. Eat, keep going, keep going, I'm listening. Eat. Maybe smoke, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm taking a nap. What's your favorite strand currently? Oh, I'm doing the sativa. I'm just a sativa guy all okay. the time. Yeah, okay. I'm just anything for the nap. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because like and that's the thing. Like I, I know, like I could do a good indica too, mm -hmm. and that's gonna put me in the couch. But I'm like, I, I realize, I know I like to be like, a, like a head high. I don't need to like just be too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, I got you. you. Know, got you. You're not trying to zombie. I'm trying, I'm not trying take to take me a little yeah. quaint nap. Yeah, 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 a little no, quaint nap so I can yeah. come out for the day party. I <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh, I but got you. I got yeah, you. so that's that's my thing. And I realized like that um, helps me so much. Just even recharge and decompress mm -hmm. after after those classes. You know, it's important to me. And I take that time very serious to so where it's just like, yeah, I, I will meet y'all out. But all my time, all my time, all yeah. my time. Give me a few hours. I'll be up by five. OK, like, yeah, uh, I got y'all. So yeah. do you have a limit with which you could be out? The reason I ask is I've come to realize that after coming out of the pandemic, I have a social anxiety with being out for too long. Mm -hmm. Like the room gets tight and I'm just like, I, I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 be me. That be me. I'm like. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything else to say, y'all. I, I could do it. longer interviews than I can being out and partying with people. And it's nothing against people. Mm -hmm. I've, before being in the industry, running establishments, and being a part of so many events, I've the only thing that kept me in the industry is the love of the people. It was never the love of alcohol or mm -hmm. serving or throwing a great event. It's people to me always make the impact people make the event and people need something to do and we happen to be that something and coming out of the pandemic i'm just like 
I think what's sad observation wise is I realize when people see me, they see someone that can help them. But instead of reaching out to me in my free time, when I'm not at the event where I release, when I'm trying to reach for the doorknob to leave, it's, hey, man, I want to do work with you. Am I mm -hmm. right? cool? You know, hit me up. You got my number. Oh, but I got something else to talk to you about, you know, mental health wise. I'm like, my Uber's outside. Mm -hmm. right. I have my number. You can call me. I'll answer. Shoot me a text. But yeah, anything. Please don't do this as I'm leaving. Because, mm -hmm. like, there's an anxiety that is created with that where I'm just like, is it safe for me to go outside? And is it really about the fun? Or do people just see hope in me mm -hmm. and they no longer see the person that was cool with them, dapped it up, and we really were about the party. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, it's and just like, Do you I, ever get versions of that when mm, it comes to like yoga and everything that mm, you do in mm. these classes? The way you said, mm, <laughs> <laughs> he's, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> felt that in your chest. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, and that, that's the thing, you know, like mm. you say, yeah, people expect this safe space with you all the time whenever they see you this healing space all the time and yes mm -hmm. I can be very much that but also sometimes I just want to go out and let my hair down yeah. and relax and yeah. just dance yeah. like no How one's watching your locks oh my locks are about here now probably longer how like, long you been growing them for um I started growing them in 20 14. I oh, locked them. That is some time. I locked them in 2015. Cause mm -hmm. I just I just started from like a high top fade. Mm -hmm. And then um yeah, it was just like growing, growing, growing. And then my cousin was just like, let me get in here and lock this up because it was just like starting to lock on its own. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I mean, the rest was history. I mean, even then it was like higher up, but like during the pandemic, obviously no haircuts was happening. Yeah, um, that, that so, must have been a rough patch for me. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. like, bruh. Um, and so I just started letting it like go down and then I went to my loctician. I was just like, let's like try to add another row or two. And so it got lower. So mm -hmm. it's at a nice length now and everything that I um, like it. But um yeah, going back to that, it's just, it's hard to always go out and, you know, people expect, you know, to for you to be able to be open to these conversations sometimes. And it's just like, we can have a whole like heart to heart at brunch, but at a certain point, it's just like... Still brunch. Yeah, I'm just trying to yeah. drink these mimosas. Yeah. You know, so like... I paid for bottomless. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Yeah, right, gotcha. yeah. So like, that's, that's what I want to do, you know? And and there is a time, there's a balance to where it's just like, yes, obviously like everything isn't incorporated or circling around like us going out, having these rager moments yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And we need these spaces where it's just like, yeah, we're just having a coffee or whatever. But on the opposite of that, it's just like... Okay, I want to go out and dance like no one's watching, you yeah. know, like, yeah. and just have a good time, you know, and do that with my friends or my peers, my coworkers, whatever it may be. Um, so I think it's important to, yeah, set those boundaries. And so it's just like, I'm just not in the space to talk about this right now. Every time you say boundaries, you remember uh, the Dave Chappelle show skit where they were like, wrap it up the button? <laughs> <laughs> boundaries. <laughs> For literally. <laughs> you see the boundaries. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm big on boundaries and taking, I'm being even more stern on my boundaries going into 2024. Mm -hmm. Cause, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes we let, people and things you know cross that line and you know because we love them or whatever have love for these things it's just like oh well it's okay it's, it's just work i love my job I, it's just this person they don't mean to hurt me but it's just like also like mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> could you not think yeah like we're, this, this is what we're not gonna do so yeah. um okay let's wrap it up here okay. because you've done a great job do you do public speaking <laughs> that is. um or do you feel class is practice um i so i have a long history of being um mm -hmm. 
the president of things. Okay. So that is where yeah. the public speaking comes in at. I, I was class you. president all four years in high school. Mm -hmm. Whenever I transferred to Howard, I became the president of Transfer Student Association. So I was speaking a lot then. Um, and then, yeah, I just... Yeah, I, I don't say I enjoy public speaking class or anything like that, but You're conditioned. I, I'm conditioned. conditioned. I know how yeah. to articulate my words. Yeah. Um, and then class is a huge practicing tool mm -hmm. for me to where even if it's just like, I don't feel like it. To where it's just like, <laughs> okay, let me show up and let me like, you know, put on and they'll be like, oh, mm -hmm. well, this is such a great class. And da -da 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 -da. I'm like, you couldn't tell I was stressed and on the verge of tears and, you know, just because life, be yeah. life in, yeah. you know, um, thankfully I do have those um, tools in my wheelhouse to where I can lean back on that public speaking to where it's just like, I'm not phased. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't come off as, you know, that he's going through something or yeah. his voice is shaking as nervous as I can be or am or was, you know. You got a good poker face. Oh, yeah. thank you. I the reason that. I say that is my mom used to force me into positions where I was always volunteered to public speak. Mm. And what that did as a child is when I became an adult or I was a young adult, when it would be time for like, oh, you know who should do it? I'd be like, I think, fuck not. <laughs> well, <laughs> even in church, yeah, yeah, I feel that. I'm like, yeah. they, oh, well, Trent, Trent can do it. Yeah, yeah we'll put him up there. You get to this fatigue point where it's like, no, there's a room full of other people. I can't yeah. always be the words of wisdom for everyone right. because right. when you're adult, it's very easy to fall into that position and then people don't see you as like, hey man, give them a break. Right. Right. <laughs> you got to start standing up. Yeah, so, burn right. out. yeah real quick, like I should have said no early. <laughs> but um, with that being said, the last question I would like for you to ask and the reason I'm asking this is because you've brought this word up so much. And I'm also working on a campaign for this, so we'll talk about that later. Okay. What does community mean to you? Mm. Community is where healing takes place. He community is also where love is, where I've found those two things to happen because oftentimes, People can be scared to do something or take that leap on their own. Mm -hmm. um, and having a community, whether that's a run club community, whether that's a workout community, a yoga community, a church community, um, even just friends that you can travel with, you know, that community. I'm so blessed and thankful that I do have a group of friends that I can do that with, travel with, that I can. And all of these friend groups, may overlap they may not at all they may never even see like yeah. who are these people in yeah. the club or who yeah. are these people that you travel with all the yeah. time you know got me fucked up <laughs> like, like, why didn't you like me i yeah. like to travel you know so but i i do community is so much for me and it's big so big for me um and that is why during the pandemic, it was hard. I just wasn't missing one thing. I was missing the community. I wasn't just yoga. I was missing like, even like, honestly, you know, I know that there's so many avenues that could be taught virtually with yoga. And I'm just like, that's just not my ministry. <laughs> I like to see uh -huh. you and you and you and, and you and you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. be in there. We can hear each other's breath. And you breathing reminds me that I need to breathe a little bit deeper. And you pushing yourself and me seeing that you wasn't able to do that two weeks ago. And now mm -hmm. you're up hitting birds of paradise. Your head yeah. about, it pushes me or that other person to do that. And so that is why... Um, I'm big on community, bringing people together um, and being able to share those spaces. I know COVID is still a thing and different things. People may not want to be in those spaces, but, you know, we got to stay prayed up. And we also we are also considerate enough to make sure that we do our stuff in open spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you got to remember the space that we did our told truth event in, we used half the space, yeah. which means there was still air flowing from the other right. side of the room coming in plus the open door. And it was a magnificent yes. space. Yeah. I just, I told yeah. my boy, I was like, look expensive. But this is <laughs> right. It looks expensive. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I think it's also self-awareness to where it's just like, okay, if I am sick or not feeling well or mm -hmm. not in the best space, where it's 
not the time for you to show up yeah. in those spaces, yeah. you know? And, yeah, we and got I, family members we care about. Exactly. Got kids we care about. Exactly. Got mothers. <laughs> Literally, sisters. literally, yeah. we want them here for us. Puppies yeah. and kids, right. too. Yeah, exactly. them too. And we ain't gonna allow COVID to take us or them out. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So I am. I'm big on bringing people together and having that space of love and healing mm -hmm. take place together, and just also like you know, just being able to feel safe and let your guard down to where it's just like, I'm not alone in this. This is not, I'm not the only one doing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, there may be two other, three other people that are doing it for the first time. It's almost like, you know, um, at church and everything, they'd be like, okay, all the first times, all the visitors stand up and you'd be like, wow, well, like, hey, after church, you'd be like, hey, like, get to see, like, you know, maybe I'll see you next week, you know, and that also may start your own community to where it's just like, okay, well, you came this you, you coming next week if you come i'm gonna come in this class you know so that is the beauty of community mm -hmm. you know do you think there will truly ever be a safe space i believe that there is a mm -hmm. safe space and we've created safe spaces but this young lady sought me out at my job a couple weeks ago and she was like oh i, I see you did the thing that you told me that you do so what thing? She was like, you know, the thing for the all men group where you created safe space. I still got to introduce you to my friends who do blah, 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 blah. Friends I'm not asking for. She wanted the homies, but still, you know, no that's shade. How, that's how it be. No shade, just yeah. observation, that's right? That's how it be, yeah. And I was like, you know, I was like, I felt so, I felt proud of us for making the safe space and really accomplishing what we're looking to do because men don't have these spaces yet and even if men are given that space i don't want men to just accept the bottom of the barrel when they get it i right. want them to understand what quality work looks like in mm -hmm, that space mm -hmm. and when it's time to question hey am i really being delivered what i showed up for right. which is very right. important right. Right. and she was like you know why why do you guys use the word safe space i think safe space is a misnomer it's is there really a safe space you know why can't you use another term like i don't remember what she said but i remember thinking to myself <laughs> didn't ask yeah, right and I'm at work. Right, yeah. Why I didn't we, ask for your why opinion. Are, why are we discussing why are we discussing the business that I run and who I do it with while I'm at work at another mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. and you've never been interested in my work unless you see me because mm -hmm. that's a point of discussion. And I was like Boundaries. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> boundaries. boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, word of the day. Yeah. And it was it's fascinating because I don't know if you go through this, but there truly are people who think they have say in the businesses that we build and the people we work mm -hmm. with and how we do it. And they've never once visited our the space, space right. are given towards that space and advice isn't giving towards that space. Mm -hmm. My friend who picked up the phone in Japan to ask, is the space safe for trans men? That's someone that's giving to the space. That's a real concern. You see where this is going and who it can affect. My friends who say, hey, I'm glad you're doing this good work, but be careful of so, 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 and so. Mm. Those are people that are concerned with how the business could be taken in the wrong direction or taken advantage of, so keep these things in mind. But when someone comes through to hunt me out at my job to have a discussion about my other job, yeah, I just, I question that because it's like, I'm not going to tell you that your life experience is invalid, but you don't get to disassociate or discredit what we've accomplished, even if life hasn't been fair to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So with that being said, welcome back to another episode of Mental Health Monday. Appreciate everybody for pulling up. Uh, like. Subscribe, share, appreciate all y'all. Great faces right here, great faces right here. There you go, great faces. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey, great thank faces you right here. Oh, great thank, faces you, right thank here. you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna catch you, homies, later. Peace. <laughs>